Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University. Hi, I'm Nick, and I love Washington's geology. I've been teaching it for 20 years now. Let's hit the highways, visit places you all know, and I can help you see Washington like you've never seen Washington before. Welcome to Central Rocks, Roadside Geology. Just south of Ellensburg, Washington, the Yakima River Canyon is a wonderful place to study and enjoy the great outdoors. Ellensburg's main street flows directly south to Canyon Road. The old two-lane highway winds its way for miles through the canyon, finally emerging at the city of Yakima. To explain the canyon's formation, the earliest residents of the Northwest, the Chinook people, created a myth involving a fight between a giant beaver and a giant coyote to cut the canyon. For thousands of years, local Native Americans made careful observations of the Yakima River and the ridges of central Washington. As the first geologists of the area, the Chinook people had an explanation for these curious canyon cuttings across the landscape. In the early days of the world, Wishpush, the giant beaver, lived on Lake Cleellum. Wishpush always killed all of the animals that wanted to fish there by drowning them in the lake. Coyote, the wisest and most cunning of the animals, made up his mind to kill Wishpush. One day, Coyote speared Wishpush with all of his might, and the giant beaver plunged to the bottom of Lake Cleellum, dragging Coyote with him. Coyote fought so desperately with Wishpush that the banks of the lake were torn out, water surged through the break, and they plunged through the mountains. The water rushed madly into the broad Kittitas Valley and formed another lake. The struggle between Coyote and Wishpush continued and they destroyed the banks of that lake and they fought as the waters surged madly into the lower Yakima Basin and a lake was formed at Toppenish. This continued until the fighting animals made it all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Over the past century, classically trained field geologists have also pondered the canyon's formation. They also have noticed that the canyon is not straight and that meandering canyon cuts directly across a series of ridges. Today we tackle the question, who formed first, the ridges or the Yakima River? To start, we need to learn the basics of rivers and the rocks that they typically drop. Rivers deposit rocks that are rounded, sorted by size, and varied in rock type. But things get interesting when we start finding river rocks in places that rivers are not. Ah, spectacular. We're at uh, Craig's Hill in the middle of Ellensburg, Washington, right in town. And we have this glorious outcrop most people don't look at it very carefully, but of course we do. Let's be real careful. Let's observe like we've done at other spots already today. Rocks, let me pull them out. Uh-huh. Right, let me collect a few. I'll throw my hammer down. Every one of these guys has rounded corners. Most of these guys, roughly the same size. And if we look carefully, we've got an incredible variety. Now you're a quick student, you know what this means already, don't you? Rounded rocks, about the same size, incredible variety. Say it with me. River deposit, river deposition, but where's the river? 
we're in the middle of town. The Yakima River that we know and love is at least two miles to the west of us. In other words, this spot is two miles east of the present river. Great evidence that the Yakima River has not always been in its current spot. And our business about channels migrating laterally and rivers changing their path, this is the evidence we need. We've even got something better than that in Craig's Hill. Up above us, out of sight, is a volcanic ash layer above us, a volcanic ash layer that's in this hill, five million years old. So if, this lay, if these rocks are below that five million year old volcanic rock layer, then we know that these rocks were deposited older than five million years ago when the area was flat. Okay, so let's think about this for a sec. These two rocks have been sitting next to each other for at least five million years until right now. We've got sun hitting that spot for the first time in at least five million years. That's power. Deposits, like those at Craig's Hill, help us understand that rivers don't always stay in place. If the terrain is flat, and if there is enough geologic time, the channel of a river system will naturally begin shifting laterally. Why is this? What causes the river to pick up and move next door? A quick trip to a research lab helps us answer that question. Stream table modeling shows that as rivers age, they go through different stages. At birth, rivers are youthful and straight, but as they age, their meanders become more exaggerated. Why is this? A close look at one curve tells us that fast water on the outside of the curve erodes the land, while on the inside of the curve, slow-moving water deposits sediment. The net result? A continual shifting of the river's channels. Well, now we're on to something. Different stages of river development tells us about the region where the river is flowing. If the land is flat, the river is allowed to push through all five stages, often going through those stages again and again. Craig's Hill and other deposits like it in the Kittitas Valley build a strong case that the Yakima River went through many river stages when central Washington was flat. So here we are on Menashtash Ridge, just south of Ellensburg, Washington, and down below us by hundreds of feet is the Yakima River itself. The river has cut a beautiful canyon. By now you've seen many images of the canyon itself and you know the basic geometry. The river is not straight, therefore the canyon is not straight. And in fact this meandering river canyon cuts directly across Menashtash Ridge and a series of other ridges through central Washington. Now that we know about the history of these rivers and how they develop stages, I hope it's obvious to you by now that the river's course had to be set in this meandering pattern before the ridges started to grow. Seems to me if you try to argue the opposite way, that the ridges have always been here and the Yakima River decided to use this place to punch a hole through Menashtash Ridge, Okay, fine, maybe there was a fault zone or some weakness in the ridge, but it would have to be a straight river, right? It would have to be a straight path, a straight youthful burst instead of this very graceful old age meandering. Talk to any geologist you want. The river came first, the ridges came second. The ridges came second? The ridges came second, how is that possible? The Chinook people assumed that the ridges had always been there. But understanding of our globe's plate tectonics, made clear just 50 years ago, has now enlightened us. Tectonic uplift is often the driving force for intense erosion at the surface. Uplift intensifies 
erosion. And then somebody flipped a switch, a tectonic switch to start lifting all of this land against this river. That's when the canyon started cutting, when we started lifting against the river. So we don't want to visualize the river eating its way down, like I think many people visualize. Geologically, we want to visualize the river holding its position and having the whole series of rock layers lift against the river. So who was here first? Who was, who was here first, the chicken or the egg? In this case, who was here first, the river or the ridges? We say the river was here first. It couldn't develop those meanders unless this area was flat, perfectly flat, no canyon, no ridges. And as soon as that flat landscape allowed that Yakima River system to develop those beautiful meanders, then the uplift began, then these ridges started growing, and the canyon started cutting. This poor river is trapped in stage four. No chance to move on to stage five because all of its energy now is in a vertical sense, not a horizontal sense. Everybody enjoys this canyon. We enjoy it too, geologically. Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University.